it's, it's in the middle of a bigger story that began really in Genesis 3. Mm. Remember in the midst of the curse, uh, when God came, he said that there was going to be enmity between the seed of the woman mm. and the seed of the serpent forever. But he also made a promise. He said that when this baby comes, this seed of the woman, you will bruise his heel. Yes. yes he will crush yes, your head. Yes. And so then we, so, but, but we recognize there's going to be this battle always going on between mm -hmm. God's person and, and the God's people and those that come are the seed of the serpent. And so here we are, here is Goliath and he comes out, he's a giant of a Philistine and he has a big threat. He says to the Israelites, uh, send out one man and I'll fight him. And if I win, you guys are going to be slaves to us, the Philistines forever. But if he wins, we'll be your slaves. Well, David arrives on the scene bringing food to his brothers who are there in the Israelite army. And he can't believe, remember that Saul, that they wanted him because they wanted him to go out before them in battle. And what is he doing? He's hiding in the tent. I mean, every day Goliath is coming out and saying, send out a man and Saul won't go. And David can hardly believe that this goon from yeah. Gath is coming out every day, insulting not just God's people, but their God. Yeah. He, and he wants to stand up for God's honor. And he says, you send me and I will go out and fight. Yeah. So, you know, his brothers don't want him to. Saul says he won't, but he does. He, but he doesn't use the world's armor, the technology of the day. No, he, he get, does go out. He picks out these five stones that he knows how to work with. But we have to see the bigger picture of what's being pictured here. Because in, when we read this story, what we need to see Here's David, he is the, the Lord's anointed at this point, which in the New Testament, it would be the word Messiah. He is the Christ. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, we should yeah. see in him a picture of the greater Christ to come. Mm. But not only that, when Goliath comes out, this interesting fact that is in the NIV I love in verse 5 of chapter 17, it says he has a bronze helmet, that he wore a coat of scale armor. Hmm. In other words, he looks like a nine-foot-tall serpent. Mm. And wow. he does just what the serpent did in the garden and has done, which is, he says, if I win, you become my slave forever. Mm. So this is the greatest battle in the history of all time. And what does David do? He crushes the head oh, yeah. of the serpent, yeah. Yeah. right? Right? And so what happens is here's the Israelite army. They're back there. They're like us. That's how we should see ourselves in the story. We, we shouldn't see ourselves as David going out there to fight our giants like you are referring to. Instead, you know what? You and I are those Israelites that are standing back the line. And we're terrified mm. because we know if our champion, if he doesn't win when he goes out, we're going to be slaves to that evil forever. Mm. So likewise, you and I have a champion. Actually, I love that. The we whole have a champion. There the greater Christ, mm. the Lord Jesus, who went out alone and crushed the head of the serpent. And so we are joined to him. And so that's why we can say praise to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And so the good news, when we read this story of David and Goliath, we should, we should realize our champion has gone out and won so that you and I don't have to be slaves forever to, e to evil.